Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja and in this segment today we are going to discuss the issue that Karnataka has with the draft notification to declare certain region of Western Ghats as eco-sensitive zone. Okay, so this is the reason, the why is the reason that we are discussing this topic because it holds immense importance from the perspective of prelims and also from the perspective of GS mains paper 3. So first of all, let us have a look on the different topics that we are going to discuss step by step. These are the many topics that we are going to discuss step by step and from the perspective of prelims as well as mains, we have these many topics. Prelims focus will be of course on the Western Ghats, what are eco-sensitive zones, highlights of the Kasturi Rangan report, and of course the draft notification that has been brought out by the Union Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. From the perspective of GS Mains Paper 3, what do we need to understand here is conservation, environmental pollution and degradation, environmental impact assessment. So all these important topics will be covered in this particular segment. First of all, let us understand that why is Karnataka having a problem with the draft notification with respect to eco-sensitive zones in the Western Ghats. So, okay, so as we know that Western Ghats are one of the biodiversity hotspots in the world and they are needed to be protected. What is eco-sensitive zone? What are eco-sensitive zones? These are uh, basically uh, the regions 10 km around the protected areas, national parks and wildlife sanctuaries. And we all know that Western Ghats have a lot of protect, uh, protected areas with respect to national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, biosphere reserves. And Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change declares any re region as eco-sensitive zone. And the, basically, we have to understand that prelims can ask us under what act or under which act such zones are declared. It is declared under Environment Protection Act of 1986. The aim is to regulate certain activities which are falling in the eco-sensitive zone around the protected areas so that the first is to of course have a control over the activities so that there is a minimization of the negative impact of such activities over those regions which are highly ecologically important to us okay let us move on and talk about western ghats see western ghats are a very important not only from the perspective of ecology but also economy and overall development so western ghats they extend from the sapura range in the north and they also extend from sapura range in the north then moving on to maharashtra goa karnataka and kerala of course so you see that this is much more of a continuous range the western ghats with minimum gaps as compared to the eastern ghats and they are highly important from the perspective of hydrology, climate change, conservation of tribes as well as many other things. And you see that their extension is such that they are broadest in the, you can say, Maharashtra and Karnataka range. While you see that they are isolated or gapped in the Kerala area. We have covered much of the extension and the isolation of western ghats in our news on map as well okay so first that and it goes yes of course karnataka kerala tamil nadu all these states are covered okay so if states are asked then you can go from uh, if you talk about the states then gujarat also has a fringe region of the western ghats in itself so Gu gujarat goa karnataka tamil nadu kerala and it ends at Kanyakumari embracing the Indian Ocean and the mountain range covered an area of around 1,40,000 square kilometers in a 1,600 kilometer long stretch. Okay. Moving on, if we talk about the highest peak, the Kardamom. Kardamom is the highest peak which is present in the Western Ghats. Tell me in the comment segment, where is Kardamom peak? That means in which state is it present? Okay. So, how are they significant from the perspective of climate? They are extremely significant when they act as a barrier for southwest monsoon and making it possible that the southwest monsoon shed its moisture in the western ghats and then it gives rise to so many rivers hydrologically. It's very important. So the high mountain forest ecosystem, they influence Indian monsoon weather pattern. Here we are talking about the southwest monsoon the western slopes they have 
tropical and subtropical moist broadleaf forest which, which are marked predominantly by rosewood mahogany and cedar and the eastern slopes of the western ghats they have dry as well as moist deciduous forest they are marked predominantly by which kind of trees teak is present sal shisham sandalwood trees all are present over here okay Moving on, if we talk about wildlife, wildlife from the perspective of wildlife, many endemic species are present amidst the enormous amount of flora and fauna, such as Nilgiri tar, this is endemic to Western Ghats, also lion tailed macaque, okay, and at least 325 globally threatened IUCN red data list as of 2021. These have been registered in Western Ghats. Moving on, if we talk about protected areas, the Nilgiri biosphere reserve is pre present over here which has many protected areas within itself, wildlife sanctuaries, national parks. The Silent Valley National Park in Kerala is among the last tracts of virgin tropical evergreen forest in India, which are untouched. That is why we, we are extremely, we have to be extremely responsible towards the Western Ghats. Now, Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri, these are the many rivers which flow, these are eastward flowing and these are the rivers which originate from the Western Ghats. They form an amount they form an enormous amount of reservoir for hydrology for the people of south india also they influence climate of course we talked about the southwest monsoon also they are responsible for sequestering or absorbing carbon dioxide which gives the gives us immense edge over the climate change greenhouse gas warming greenhouse uh, global warming and greenhouse gases biodiversity is it is one of the eight hottest hotspots of biodiversity in the world and again, this is one of the reasons why we need to uh, be responsible towards Western Ghats, towards the safety of Western Ghats. Many economically important metals and materials and elements are present over there, such as iron, manganese, bauxite ore. This is also an important source of timber for the tribes which are dependent on Western Ghats. For the other industries on which the people of the region are economically dependent upon it are, of course, paper industry, plywood, polyfibers and matchwoods. Also plantation crops, coffee plantation, rubber plantation are found in the Western Ghats, which is important economically. Then these are also home to indigenous tribes, specifically particular vulnerable tribal groups. And these Ghats, they are actually a reservoir of 44.2% of tribal population of 695 of Karnataka. Okay. And then these tribes can be termed as Gaulis, Kunbis, Halakki, Vakalla, Kare, Vakalla, then Kunbi, also Kulwadi, Marathi. Okay, with respect to tourism, many important hill stations such as Uti, Tekkadi, WS, everything is present over here. And Sabrimala in Kerala also is present in this particular region of Western Ghats. Okay, so this is the importance of Western Ghats for the entire economy, ecology and of course the world. With respect to draft notification that has been brought out by the Union Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, the thing is that it declares approximately 46,832 square kilometers of the region of Karnataka and five states basically of the region of five states to be economically sensitive, ecologically sensitive zone, sorry for that. So Gujarat is present, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Goa and Tamil Nadu is present over here. Kerala is, however, excluded. Here, an area of 9,993.7 square kilometer has been reserved for ecologically sensitive zone as compared to what the Kasturi Ranjan report said that they need to cover 13,000 square kilometer. Okay, so for Karnataka, it is the draft notification says we need to preserve 20,668 square kilometer of Karnataka's E. Uh, economically sen ecologically sensitive zone and again in Goa it's 1461 for Maharashtra it's 17,340 for Tamil Nadu it's 6,914 and for Gujarat it's just 449 because it's not a lot of present over in Gujarat okay moving on see as you saw that the most of the region that has to be preserved is in Karnataka okay roughly 60,000 square kilometer has to be declared as eco-sensitive area according to the Kasturi Ranjan report of 2013, okay? And here it said that 20,668 square kilometer of the area, it falls in Karnataka, which covered 1,576 villages. You can see the similarity. Government has implemented the, the recommendation through 
the draft and notification of Kasturi Rangan report. Now, recommend it also recommended that there should be a blanket ban, partial ban on industries which are harmful to the ecology, such as mining, querying. Also, they needed to set up red category industry and thermal power projects. They should also be regulated, and there should also be uh, seen that whatever impacts are going to be there because of the infrastructural project that should be studied first then only the infrastructural projects and other projects can be carried on unesco tag it wanted a unesco tag for the western ghats because it helps a lot in the saving and conservation of such areas which have a unesco tag okay moving on if we talk about the uh, draft notification something what the kasturi ranjan report said it has been implemented through the draft notification how there has been a complete ban on mining querying and sand mining in the ecologically sensitive areas again all existing mines are to be phased out within 5 years that means they have to be closed down within 5 years in a phased manner phased manner not once but gradually and uh, it could be done from the date of issue of the final notification first or on the expiry of the existing mining lease there are two options either or okay then it also bars setting up of new thermal plant power plant projects new thermal power plant projects cannot take place in those areas expansion of existing plants in sensitive areas are also banned accordingly the banning of all new red category industries red category industries are those industries which have a pollution index score of 60 and above okay these include petrochemical manufacturing and coal liquefaction it creates a lot of environmental pollution not only air but also water pollution soil pollution and every sort of pollution that is possible construction of new township and area development projects are also banned okay these are completely banned then what is allowed healthcare establishments which are already existing they can continue new hydropower projects which are important for the purpose of agricultural process drinking water everything is allowed okay but that has to be done under environmental impact assessment notification itself so there is a regulation for that as well now orange category industries are also allowed here the pollution index score is of 41 to 59 again these include jute processing white industries such as white industries are what these do not uh, create pollution a lot so chalk making is one of the white industries so these are allowed moving on if we talk about implementation how the government will implement this a decision support and monitoring center for western ghat this will be uh, established okay and this will be established by whom the environment ministry in collaboration with all the state governments that have western ghats passing through their region and this particular decision support and monitoring center for western ghat it will assess and report on the status of ecology of western ghats and that would be done on a regular basis and not only that reporting Plus, decision making will also be done and the implementation of the provisions of the notification will also be done by this particular centre. So, remember that. Again, if we talk about the post-clearance monitoring, uh, when a project has been cleared under environment impact assessment, what will happen after that? Then the state government will be responsible for that in collaboration with the State Pollution Control Board and the Regional Office of the Ministry, okay, Ministry of Environment. And the state government will also provide a state of health report okay uh, of the western ghat region every state will have its own report and this will be on an annual basis remember that okay moving on if we talk about the issue why does karnataka have such an issue uh, it does not it, it is not happy with the area that has been covered under the draft notification why because it says that the kasuri ranjan report on the basis of which the draft notification tells the state government to put the region under ESA is of course based on the satellite images that means whatever the satellite images have been provided by the report on the basis of that only it has been done ground realities have not been checked because they are saying Karnataka government is saying that the uh, that the ag agricultural and horticultural activities that are taking place in that region are based on a very econo uh, economically plus ecologically sensitive uh, way okay it's sustainable and the implementation of the report it says that it will halt the developmental activities that are already being taken into that place again and they are also saying that whatever premise has been provided for the karnataka government to provide uh, 
uh, certain kinds of provisions to the tribes it has been done under the forest protection act of 1980 so that will also get disturbed this is the issue so what is our way forward our way forward is that we have to first of all study the ground realities first and since the kasturi rangan report came into being after that many changes have been taken place so we also need to review that report plus stakeholder and community engagement should be done with respect to those states which are not happy with the uh, implementation of the draft notification because until and unless we have a proper communication with such stakeholders we would never be able to implement those project by heart and again sustainable economic development should take place maybe completely banning certain activities are important but those activities which can take place sustainably they need to be reviewed and then implemented okay so let us have a look on the prelims question for today the question is which of the following is are true about western ghats western ghats are higher in elevation compared to the eastern ghats western ghats are continuous while eastern ghats are discontinuous western ghats are called the annamalai hills and cardamom hills in kerala we have to answer it correctly okay so that's it yesterday's answer is option d many of you have answered it correctly thank you so much for watching answer this again and we shall meet again